you know things things happens uh technical difficulties you know the, with the network everything but we are here and uh, we're really happy this afternoon because we have such a handsome guest uh pak christoph piganio uh he's the uh, president director of apl member of zoolic pharma and he'll be uh, talking about transformation um, as we all know that effective transformation enables organization to unlock new opportunities drive new growth deliver new efficiencies and eventually help the company to grow sustainability but the tough question is how now in this session christoph will share his experience as a global executive on how he managed transformation successfully through his leadership journey in various countries from europe us in Asia Pacific region, including China, Singapore, Hong Kong, Philippines, Korea, Indonesia, and India. So uh, without further ado, we can't wait to listen and learn from you, uh, Christoph. You have 35 minutes to present, and then we'll be followed up by about 10 to 15 minutes Q&A. So the stage is yours. Hi, Indra, and hi, everyone. And uh, I wanted to wear this mask just a few seconds to show how innovation has ability to transform things, right? If you look at <laughs> previous mask and you lose this beautiful batik, yep. this is how we can change lives around us. I yes. listened earlier, Derek, to, uh, to the presentation, Indra, of Derek. And, yep. uh, you know, I learned that indeed elephants can climb trees. Yes. So I remember what was said earlier. And I agreed with, with a statement, actually, you know, elephants probably can climb trees if we put ourselves to it. Uh, and I love to agree some with previous speakers, and sometimes it's interesting not to agree on some things. I like the fact that he said innovation can come from the top and needs to be supported from the top. But I think actually innovation, most of the time, comes from the team. And this is what I'm going to talk about today. And I, I'll share just one thought first. As a leader, my only concern is, are we running fast enough? Right. It's not, are we running, are we walking? So it's, are we running fast enough? Could we run faster? So today, and thank you for inviting, uh, inviting me here, I will take you through a transformation journey we went through in our own company. Um, Anugra Farmindo Lestari is actually a division or a member of uh, Zuli Pharma, quite a sizable group in Asia. So let me maybe on the, on the presentation slide, if I can have the presentation on the, on, on the screen. Um, what, what is our company? Um, first and foremost, uh, Anugra Farmindo Lestari is a distributor and commercializer of healthcare services in Indonesia. Can we have the presentation on? It's on? You have asked them, okay. So what is um, our company doing? We are quite a sizable company here. We have around 3,000 employees. We do roughly a billion in turnover, a billion dollar. So it's a sizable company. And, you know, how do we transform such a company from what it is today to what it needs to be? And, you know, I like the elephant because, yes, we are large and sometimes we feel like an elephant, but really... We need to be agile, especially within times of crisis. So we all went through this very unique time where we had um, quite a dramatic or traumatic experience. But it's up to us how we see these traumatic experiences. And in general, companies who are successful use these, exper these moments to accelerate fundamental trends which is what we had started to do, but which is what I will share with you today, our journey towards that. So our company, as you can see here, we have been here for many years, 35 years. Uh, you can see we are all across the nation. So it's very complicated to when you want to deploy something, when you want to innovate, how do we do across such a large organization and through a large geography with different cultures, um, because, you know, Indonesia has so many different type of uh, cultures across the different islands that it has that it's very, very complicated to do. So 
On top of that, we, we reach, of course, a large number of customers. We're a middleman, so we are between uh, clients, pharmaceutical companies, and um, hospitals, and, and uh, pharmacies, and modern trade retailers. So it's quite a complex environment. And how do you stay agile, or even better, move faster, start to be more agile than what people expect? And you know, I like to take this image of the ASEAN Games, even though now it's a little bit history, but when I first arrived in Indonesia two years ago, it was time of ASEAN Games. Indonesia has been able to achieve something most countries can never do, organize uh, as, I mean, a game of multiple countries within two years. You know, no one can do that. You know, you ask any countries in Europe, US, South America, you know, Asia, two years, too short, but Indonesia pulled it off. So the mindset is the first thing that we will talk about. So, but first, who, let me talk to you briefly, what have we done? And there is a part that is internal and external. So if I can have the next slide, I will share with you a little bit on two aspects with this crisis. So there is an internal part of our transformation and there is an external part. If I can have the next slide. Thank you. So on, on the internal part of our transformation, we want to think how can we gather forces, forces of innovation, forces who want to change, forces who want to engage. And it's not easy because in the population, who are real innovators? Not many. Huh? The, the general population is more a follower. I think innovators is 10, 15% of the population. You have uh, first uh, adopters, then the followers, and then the resistors, right? Which is usually, you have another probably 30%, 40%, and then you, you are left with 20% uh, of resistors. So first, gather the forces within the company. And you can see here, how do you, we select them? So for us, we selected 300 people, and uh, we had 300 volunteers who were here to support the, the changes. And then you start to create engagement. So we need to show these people they're important to us. And it's not only the ideas at the top. So, you know, compared to Derek, I would say, yeah, ideas from the top for disruption, yes. But really, innovation can happen every day and needs to happen every day and new ideas come, need to come every day. And, and we need to do a lot of things to change the environment around us. You know, innovation just doesn't happen in a place where people don't like to be. Innovation doesn't happen in a place that is very regimented. So it comes through office space. It comes through activities that you do with the team. And then when we start to have the people, the engagement, we need to celebrate. Celebrate at every single moment you can. Best employees, best ideas, best disruption, and show to the people what is important for the organization, but also get the people to select the criteria, not only coming from the top, because innovation from the top can very well happen, but probably is not sustainable in the company. So you can see here a lot of things we did, innovation awards, internal launch, uh, many, many different areas where we actually took the opportunity to celebrate. Because also, who are the innovators? Typically, people who are quite conceptual. These conceptual people might not like too much details, but they like celebration. They like to be around people who appreciate their work. And then also try to analyze the talent you have and hire potentially disruptive talent. We like to hire people who are like us, right? But people are not thinking like us. Usually we don't like to hire, but we need to have a few in the organization. These are agents of change. These are agents to make sure that they are catalysts to our differences and they can highlight things that are 
potentially blindsided to us. And then, of course, you can see some behind that. We have done quite a few innovations in the company uh, to change how we act and more importantly, run faster and bring these things together. One thing I didn't put here, especially in Indonesia, we need to put a time bound. So innovation that is three years down the road is probably an innovation that can never happen. So if we know we only have a certain time, people will go faster and they will innovate more. Now, externally, what can we do? Well, earlier, I, I really liked what Derek said when he said, oh, you can buy innovation. I'm reading my notes here from what he said. Buy innovation outside the company. I liked that very much. Actually, you can buy it or you can partner. You know, one of the old mindset is I want everything within the company, especially when you're a large company. I want to control everything. This is an old paradigm. The new paradigm is how can I partner? Of course, creating platforms, creating ecosystems is not always easy. And we have to be a bit careful because sometimes we can be disrupted as well. So there is a certain element of care, of, of strategic care that we need to do. But it's so important that we look at external parties who can really help us move faster, not automatically buying, just partnering. So the partnership of external people is very important. And who are better people than also our own customers? So don't hesitate to partner with customer and ask them, help me to innovate, because they have more ideas than we have a lot of times. Uh, and then, of course, digital, right? So digital is moving our world. And, uh, you know, the, we are all having a digital agenda nowadays, I guess. And uh, uh, this is very important for all of us to be on digital. But what is a bit less known is probably data is known. But if you go in deeper in data, machine learning, we all heard about AI. But, you know, what can we do with it? So here I will just say, learn from the best in the industry. Listen to the innovations of the unicorns, see how they move, understand how they work the innovation process. There is a, a very good video, I think on uh, Spotify, and they share in, a, in a two YouTube videos how they recreated their innovation um, in, within the company. And, watching those videos, learning from these external parties or, you know, companies like LinkedIn or, you know, here, of course, in our, in our domain, Hello Doc, Hello Doctor, Hello Sehat, and, and uh, companies like that, Gojek, Grab, uh, Lazada, and, and, you know, get that infused knowledge and, you know, the permeability of their knowledge through your organization by inviting some of the key speakers from those organizations. Uh, Finally, work with your uh, institutional partners. So here, you know, we, we, we work with chambers and take some leadership positions in those chambers, yourself, your team, and learn from that. So this is one thing I did is I, I went to uh, on the board of the Swiss Cham and, you know, I was asked to lead innovation and sustainability and let's see you know, what can we do in these domains? And, and you know, get out of your day-to-day -day company and learn from outside. So this has been very helpful for us. And, you know, some of the achievements you see here, we got uh, plenty of, of, of awards from external and we celebrated, overly celebrated the results um, of the partnerships of the awards we receive again to show the organization this is important. If we can go to the next slide. And one of the questions, how do we get that done? Uh, so you can see uh, many pictures here of the team, right? So many times is go and meet the people. Well, with the current timing, it's very difficult. With the current timing, we all want to stay in and not take the time to go out and meet. Well, we must make the effort to meet sometimes on camera like now, 
or also physically, and you can see here, I took personally a lot of time, but I'm also asking all the management team, remember, we have people daily who are delivering to hospitals who are risking their lives somehow to deliver medicine, to go and visit the doctors, show them you can also be there for them. Now, do it in the right way with all the measures, but it's very important. So let's look at the transformation journey in the next slide, please. And one of the key message to anyone here who wants to do innovation is innovation by itself is important. Celebration by itself is important. But we can only be successful at that when we amplify, when we amplify all this to the team with a very targeted communication, amplified to customers, amplified to clients. Can I have the next slide, please? So while the, the next slide is coming, what did we think about? So we said, OK, if we want to innovate first, I will start with the identification of the issues. For this, we need to listen carefully, thoroughly to customers, to clients, to, for us, customers and clients. Clients are manufacturers, customers are hospitals or pharmacies, but also to employees. And, you know, we were like a sleeping giant, very large organization, but people saw us as, you know, we... You know, it's difficult to move in such a large organization. And then when we heard this message from clients and customers, we put that on video. We put that and we amplified to all the organization with what is called voice of customer. You all understand that. But that voice of customer is so impactful when it's on a video. Maybe if I put that in presentation, half of the team doesn't believe me. If the team members share this that, that, uh, information back, you know, in their weekly meetings, no one believes. But when we see a small video with some customers, wow, the impact is amazing. And then we share some, of course, some consequences of us being seen as a sleeping giant and what could it look like in the future. And then we started to say, okay, how can we address issues? And this is not only at the top, it's everyone need to roll out their sleeves because everyone makes a difference. How do we engage the team in that transformation? This is really fundamental. And again, right, disruptive innovations probably come from a few people. I would not say automatically from the top, but from a few people. And we need to celebrate those people who think different, who see things differently. And a lot of times in companies, they are ostracized because they are not thinking the same. And then engage the team, excite the team for the changes. First, small. You know, there, there is a, a movie that some of you might have watched called The Patriot, is uh, Mel Gibson in, uh, in the US. And he tells his son, who is, uh, who is uh, killing the invaders, and sorry for that analogy, but he says, son, Aim small, miss small. So if we aim small, we are quite sure the result will be good and not too far off. And those small innovations celebrate. You know, a good example of that, I think, is Singapore Airlines, who does an amazing job at celebrating their, their champions in service. And they all have these amazing stories of people going beyond the normal step. Well, we did the same. Those people were able to innovate, to change, to resolve problems. We celebrated and celebrated. And then suddenly, everyone in the organization is doing it. So when we see that, oh, very good. We have the engine now to start to improve and innovate. And then we can go back to school. Number one, revisit what we are doing. Really look at the value chain, the value innovation, the value stream mapping, which is, the, you know, if you want to, to look at some technology like Six Sigma, look at the value add we have, look where we can disrupt, use 
tools like Blue Ocean to really look where you could change the paradigm in your value, value uh, innovation. And when you need to, you go back to school also and learn. So, you know, I can give you examples. We went back to learn about what is machine learning? How can we change big data? What kind of AI can we do? Can we use drones to deliver medicines in the country? Uh, you know, can we use uh, flying cars in the, or flying motorcycles within certain areas? And we looked very widely. Of course, there are regulation. Of course, there are some things that are limiting us. But we found enough innovations to bring on the table to make a big difference in our business model, to make a big difference to our customers, and in the end, to patients of Indonesia. And we supported all this by having a realization in the country, which was basically the following. We have many different cultures, right? We have some cultures in Indonesia that are very direct, some co other cultures that are much less direct and much more tentative in how they express things. And that we realized was stifling innovation in the company because people didn't dare to speak up. We also had younger generations, millennials, who were easy to ask questions and challenge, and some other people who were not so easy to ask questions because it was seen as a bad thing to ask questions. And what we did is we created one culture and we call that JJSS. So it's Jelas, Jujur, Salim Mandukum, Mandukum and Salim Mangargai. So clear, direct, supportive and respectful. And we tell everyone when you come in the company, you wear this hat of JJSS and you're no more culture. We only speak one language and that allow to free up people to give feedback and to give ideas on how we could do things different, do things better, stop doing things that we didn't need to do and start to generate quite good innovation within the company. Now, of course, the next step is let's look at what people are doing, not only in Indonesia, let's look in other entities of our group you know, that are in uh, uh, countries that are maybe a bit ahead of us or in the US. But we realize we also were able not to follow anymore, but to lead. You know, some people that I met in Indonesia said, we can only follow and didn't dare to say, we can be the first ones to implement in Indonesia. We don't have to wait four years to prepare ASEAN Games. We can make it in two years. So same with us in Apia. And I use these very vivid examples so that people realize we can do. And I think it's very, very important. If we can have the next slides, you will see some of the, of the things we have done um, in uh, you know, some of the events. And uh, you can see some of the pictures of the different events that we use. But basically, it's really, we, we, we use very simple tools. We use very practical examples. We amplified those examples to the teams. And the, the power of the communication team to the transformation was also very fundamental. And we shared all these uh, in regular town halls, which is the first picture you see, we have a, a something which we call, you know, APL click, which is basically ad hoc information, simple, very visual, as you can see here. Uh, we did very large gatherings um, before COVID, but during COVID, we continued that online. Uh, and then we posted uh, to everybody. And, and one of the things we did very different also, during COVID, many companies almost stopped training. We actually tripled the number of training hours in the company. And the way we did it is, of course, online, because it was actually indeed much cheaper to get it done. If I can have the next slide, you will see some of the tools. So these were some of the pictures of the events. 
And you know, some of the tools we had uh, next was really uh, used all across the company. And, and again, right, we only, in my view, we only at the beginning of the journey. And uh, people now start to enjoy the journey and start to enjoy changing and start to enjoy going beyond the day-to-day, -day, which you know, in our industry, it's very important we do the day-to-day -day correctly. But beyond the day-to-day -day is what we wanted to be able to do. Uh, can we get the next slide? Yeah, you can see here many tools at the bottom again, and how do we implement those changes? So you, you can see on every part here, identifying the issue, we created surveys. Quarterly, not the survey you read once in a year and you wonder what you should do to change it. Uh, but we created surveys to get regular feedback. And we use this feedback in a timely manner. So, you know, we need to implement changes within three months. You know, we have a complexity in Indonesia with the, with the geography, with, you know, the country is very large, uh, the different cultures, a lot of admin work. We needed to break that. So we said, whatever innovation you put together, you need to fix it within three months. So we created this three months challenge. Whatever you have a project to innovate, it has to be done within three months. And of course, it needs to show in results. So addressing the issues and showing the results has to be there. And it's very important that we translate those tools and those things we do, those projects, and show the real impact it has to our clients, our customers, patients, employees, of course, shareholders. And then back to learn, learning from online, learning from experts, regional teams, or others. Very, very powerful. I'd like to close with a, a quick video on the company, and then after maybe a, a, a few more remarks. So if we can go to the next slide and the video, and share with you some of the things that we have done. Um, and we, we did a, a very large event actually called Healthcare 4.0 uh, last year. We were expecting to do one new one this year, but of course uh, this year most events were, were delayed or changed. But if we can have the next slide in the video, then we can share. But really the difficulty is engaging the full team here. So. If I want to sum up before the video, it's really four points. Transformation and innovation is a journey, it's a path, and we need to enjoy that journey and path. It's not a destination. Remember to repeat the message and amplify to the team. Amplification, communication is sometimes underrated, but it's very important. And then, celebrate the achievement to focus on outcomes to bottom line achievement also outcomes on people how they feel when they innovate and explaining sometimes in details how the innovation took place from a concept to detailed implementation to transformation with the engagement of the team to drive actually results for the company we can have the video and then after we can go to the Q&A. Yes, you can start. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Christoph. Uh, very enlightening presentations. Uh, it seems some some of our audience has some difficulties of, uh, in accessing the the video, but uh, it's fine. Like we can continue on because most of our uh, audience is still able to to join the the, the sessions. I have a few questions okay. if you don't mind, and we have like eight minutes <laughs> before sure. our next sessions. Uh, actually, I have plenty of questions, but I like to start with. Uh, you mentioned about sleeping giants, right? So it's 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 almost like during the direct sessions, uh, he used the analogy of an elephant, and then and you use sleeping giants, uh, and and you you mentioned that we need to wake this these sleeping giants, and actually the pandemic already uh, did the job of of waking everyone up, including the the sleeping giants. But as we all know, that not all giants. Uh, accept the situations and do something to not just rectify the situation, but capturing opportunities. Some of them are still in denials. And as Derek mentioned earlier, it's it it really boils down to how the top management actually uh, see the crisis and see the organization and see the opportunity. So my question is, if that happened in, in the organizations of... Uh, some of our audience, uh, what is your suggestions to the, probably not the top management, but the middle management who, who wish to wake, uh, not just wake the sleeping giants, but also help them to, to, to uh, start doing something worthwhile during the pandemic and then capturing all the opportunities? Yeah, the, I think Indra, you're on a very valid point. I mean, the, the first one obviously is realization where you are, right? and communicating where you are. So finding simple examples and, and making sure, but how do you change that, right? It's always the difficulty. So one of the way we did, and you know, I can only share, you know, I'm not a professor who studies that for, for a living. Uh, what we did is we, we realized, I cannot ask the organization to change first everything. And it could be dangerous also, right? So we created, we extracted from the team, the top players. So the, the top performers, we put them all in one team. And we call that actually our ACE, so APL Center of Excellence. Okay. And these people, we gave them with tools and we said, guys, your role is to disrupt the company. So be our internal disruptors. And I always like to, I, I share all the time with the team. 
in the day, take five minutes, which is not a lot, right? Five minutes in my day to think, what could I have done different today? And if you do that every day, your mind will have that as a, as a reflex. But we need team members who are thinking this way. So you need to equip them with these kind of tools, right? Blue Ocean, you ask them also tools like DMake, Six Sigma, uh, Lean, all this. And they can be the disruptors. And frankly, I might not want someone who delivers medicine every day to a hospital to be the disruptor and think of a new process because maybe he will not deliver the right way, right? Yeah. But I, I need the team to be able to have, you know, I have some idea, can I give that to my champions? And they can really analyze in depth, understand the consequences and say, yes, we have a disruption here, let's go for it. Okay, I like the term internal disruptors. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll take note. We call them also uh, catalysts. You know, people oh, yeah, are yeah, able okay. to, internal you catalysts. Know, sparks, catalysts, yes, internal yes. disruptors. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you can use many terms. But I like disruptors better because it's sort of like, it's when, when you want to wake the sleeping giants, you can't just be a catalyst. Uh, catalyst. You need to sort of like put some force into it. And disruptors is just the right terms. Um, I see in your presentation that APL has plenty of programs, innovation programs. Uh, my question is, uh, in my experience, helping companies um, running innovation programs, uh, some of them, if not most of them, are not well integrated. So it's it's like it's, it's, it's like sporadic events, sporadic activities, sporadic sporadic uh, 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 workshops, and etc. So we have the town hall, we have the workshop, we have this event, awards, and everything. But again, it is not well integrated. So. There's always a question of, is it, is it really worth it? Because we, we spent a lot of money, we spent a lot of energy, and yet it's still not showing the results. So the first question is, how you integrate all those programs and activities? And the second question is, how do you sell the program to the management that all those investments are actually paid off? Uh, I think... I can have multiple answers, but you know, the, this is a very acute issue that we are all facing. Um, one, I mean, we employ two, maybe three simple methodology. Uh, the, the first one is for all projects that are happening in the company, we review them on a monthly basis mm -hmm. and we communicate around them so that mm -hmm. it's clear to everybody what are the top projects? What are the top impact? And, you know, culture change was a project by itself, but still everything we are sharing uh, quite openly and we have a, a methodology for that. I think the second part is have a communication team that is linking everything together. So company image, external events, internal events, uh, any awards, everything, and looking at the overall picture to, to have a, a, somehow a communication strategy that is accompanying the journey that you're taking. Now, the last thing is that's something I wanted to mention earlier. Um, when you're doing things like this, you also need to think, is my team the right team? So we used to, you know, I, I'm very tall, you know, Humankind used to like tall people, right? Because they were supposed to be stronger, etc. And that's how we chose people maybe uh, millions of years ago, right? Um, and then it was like the knowledge people. But today, if you look at the, I think it was um, uh, Mr. Araos from, uh, from uh, Harvard, uh, who said, you know, the four key elements. First one is curiosity, ability to drive in, to go insights, to engage and to drive. When you reanalyze the team, some people have zero curiosity. So we also included that as part of our uh, recruitment process is understanding how much curiosity people have so that we can also start to change the mindset of the people. And, and uh, when people have curiosity, they will be interested in the other functions. So I'm going back to your point, right? It's like, 
how do you coordinate? If I'm only focused on, um, you know, financial accounting and I don't care about the rest of the company, it's very hard for anybody in the company to interest you to pay attention to the rest. So that's also part of the of our journey. Right. Okay. Last question. Um, the first of the conclusions that you mentioned uh, in your presentations is that innovation is more about the journey, not the destination. For startup companies, I think it's it, it bodes well uh, for them. Uh, but for huge companies, very well established companies, sometimes innovation is a mean to uh, financial results. So again, it is not the journey. It is the destinations, which is the financial, which is that's what the stakeholders, the shareholders really care about. So um, how do you actually uh, build that mindset? <laughs> of innovation as a journey, not the destinations in such an established company? I think, you know, at the end of the day, we need to return results, right? So yeah. the results, of course, there is a financial, there are financial results, there is reputation of company, well-being of employee and, and you know, a, a and the different stakeholders. But if you innovate just for innovation, you know, frankly, no, no need, right? But what I mean is, you know, we want the company to innovate as a way of life because right. at the end we need to drive results. Um, yeah. And I would say, you know, I, I don't know any company today who can st stick to a certain business model and hope that tomorrow will be good, right? <laughs> Otherwise, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I believe we have to say goodbye. So, but yes, it has to yield, I, and, and not only results, right? You need to yield results. Uh, you need to change the concepts, you need to make sure it's detailed enough, your innovation, so that you, you can get the um, sustainable uh, outcome and, and, and repeatable outcome. Uh, it needs to take care of your people. And, and at the end, you know, the, if you look, we, we need to really take care of, uh, of all the different constituents to make sure at the end we have results. Because, you know, yes, as you said, right, companies at the end, they are here to to, to serve a purpose and yeah. usually is to make money, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a very interesting, not just topic, but conversations and, and uh, presentations as well. So thank you very much, uh, Christoph, for your time, for sharing your knowledge and experience at the Asia Corporate Innovation Summit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very we will, much. yes, we will uh, take a five minutes break and then we'll come back for the next sessions. So thank you very much. Uh, Christoph, I'll see you backstage. Thank you. Bye-bye.